Hello, uh, my name is Gib Henschke. I'm uh, an educator of many years and working in uh, schools and colleges and increasingly in the world. And um, uh, Paul Kim in his learning lab has asked me to say a few things about what my sense is of where we are in education. I, I think there's two or three things I would just sort of add all at once. And they probably all sound kind of obvious to many of us. But one is education now has never been more important than it is at this current moment. And some would say, well, it's always been kind of important, yes, but but today that old saying about the more you learn, the more you earn is more and more true. And so everybody is dying for education. But as a public good, we think that education should be available to everybody, but it turns out it's really hard to get a good education. If you look at our school systems and our universities, everybody is achieving a lot more than in the past and is very dissatisfied with the levels we're actually gaining. So we've got this terrific challenge that comes from increased demand. But here comes this third wave, and this is where I want to spend a little time on, on this one. And that is this, this growing use of not just technology, but learning how to find ways to make really good content and information and education available to many, many people that have not necessarily had really good access in the past. This is staggering. It's a ter terrific challenge, but a great opportunity. And one of the, uh, what strikes me so much is that there's such a great opportunity that when we try to take advantage of it, we're sort of caught trying to use the old rules we've lived by. We lecture in front of a bunch of students. We get them together. We do something with them. And then we, they work, and then we talk, and so on. And for many students, that's still going to be great. And for many professors, that's still going to be great. But for most of the world, uh, A, you can't get people together the way they used to in the old days. Content is changing so fast. Um, and what we know about how you teach and learn is really exploding. So to me, the, the, uh, the virtual lab idea is nothing more or less than reinventing how we actually educate ourselves. And so what I, what I find totally exciting is essentially not so much throwing away the old rules as recognizing we can take the best of the old rules but build some new ways of doing things and we don't yet have a good sort of, we're not into a new rut yet. We've got the old rut pretty well, but we do not have a new one and that's kind of exciting, but it's a little daunting at the same time. I'm a professor at the University of Southern California, and that's a terrific place to, to experience education because it's got more international students than any other university in the country. Um, we actually have a global EDD program for educators from around the world. And it was so striking to me at this moment, as being a professor in that program, is that um, the circumstances can vary, but the aspirations and the, and the goals are identical around the world. Everybody's trying to find new ways to bring better content and better access to more people in education. So that's, that's kind of what I think I've been engaged in a lot at USC, but I think Paul and his colleagues here up at Stanford are doing the same thing. And what's really exciting is that we're sort of all kind of looking out in the world and saying, my gosh, there's such great potential and opportunity. And so what do we do? So the question's kind of being turned back on us. When I talked about throwing away the old rules, the old rules were comforting in a certain way. You had institutional boundaries, you had constraints, you had budgets, you had delivery systems. You had means and modes and buildings, and you had attendance areas, and you had school finance. You have all the building blocks that make the education system what it has been for many, many years. That's both comforting because that's that you can work within that, but it's a constraint. Now, what we've got going now is the fact those constraints are are melting away. You're not bound by those constraints anymore. So the real interesting conversation is what constraints do you want to get rid of and which ones do you want to build on and, and bring something new to bear? I think it becomes almost like a Rorschach. When I say Rorschach, it means you look at something, 
you try to interpret it, but you're really interpreting what you want. So I think one of the things that really is a challenge to me, and maybe to others, is what people do we, would, would we want to be most helpful in educating? Educators like to educate. That's what they're born to do. So the question is, who and for what is our purpose? You get to that, and there's this enormous possibility now but in terms of how you do it. But the real question, and that's where I kind of like go, I think I've got my favorites. I'll tell you where I would like to do it and who I'd like to help and who I'd like to serve.